All right, so here we are on the fourth lecture of fetal circulation. We're looking at one more bypass to normal adult circulation uh, in order to understand what's going on in uh, circulation and oxygenation of blood in the fetus. Um, remember this goal of fetal circulation is we're trying to route oxygenated blood in the best quality possible to the brain. Um, there is no way that blood is going to get directly from the umbilical vein to the brain or that area um, in the state that it's in, in that fully high oxygenated state. The blood has to run through the venous system, the systemic veins, and through the heart. Um, the, the goal of this is to minimize the loss of oxygen, or really not any loss, but the dilution of that. So we're on our third reroute. We've already seen the ductus venosus that allowed blood to escape from uh, the capillaries of the liver and go over into the inferior vena cava, where it is diluted, uh, some by the inferior vena cava blood. And then we saw how that blood, though, when it arrives in the right atrium was able to jump through the foramen ovale over into the left atrium and avoid uh, a major dilution by blood entering the right atrium from the superior vena cava. So now we want to see what else. And there is one more problem that we need to deal with. This final problem has to do with that superior vena cava blood. The rich inferior vena cava blood bypassed the right atrium, jumped to the left, and that's why we see that good blood in the aortic arch. But what we need to do um, is look at the superior vena cava blood one more time and see that there could be or there would have been one more problem. That superior vena cava blood um, still poses a second threat to our umbilical blood. Um, and the umbilical blood, you know, going up the aortic arch doesn't look so bad, so there must have been something else that helped us with that problem. And you're going to see that here. Let's follow this superior vena cava blood. Um, we followed it down into the atrium. It did pick up some oxygen from the inferior vena cava blood. So when it goes down into the ventricle, you can see by its purple color, it's changed from blue to purple, there is some oxygen mixed into that blood. Not a lot, but some. Now, let's see if you remember pulmonary circulation. The right side is pumping to the lungs. So up through the pulmonary trunk, right? Out the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. Um, carrying this blood with some oxygen. Remember, there's no oxygen in the lungs. There's nothing to add to the blood here. Whatever oxygen is in this blood is going to be taken by the cells of the lungs and used for their own growth and development. Um, they do not have any oxygen of their own. So instead of in like you and me, when we see blood coming back in the pulmonary veins, it's oxygen rich. Here, the blood coming back from the lungs through the pulmonary veins is once again uh, deoxygenated. The lung tissues have taken that oxygen because they need to grow and develop just like anything. Now where is that deoxygenated blood from the lungs coming back to? And of course it's coming back to the left atrium. Do you see the problem then? That superior vena cava blood that routed itself to the right ventricle has made a circuit through and is now coming back to the left atrium. And that's the problem, right? Because we had routed our inferior vena cava blood over to the left atrium to try and escape the superior vena cava blood. And yet the superior vena cava blood should be coming back to the left atrium. So summarizing our problem here, that rich inferior vena cava blood um, was passing in the left atrium, but we've got this deoxygenated blood. All of this superior vena cava blood going through the lungs and back to the left atrium. 
There's our big problem right there. So how do we avoid that? How does that get taken care of? The, the superior vena cava blood that missed the dilution should finally enter the left atrium. <clears throat> and we can't avoid that. That superior vena cava blood has got to go through the lungs. That's pulmonary circulation. The question is, can we limit that um, can we limit that circulation um, of blood through the lungs? Can we limit that so that we don't have as big a dilution as we should? That superior vena cava blood should be coming in quantity, in full quantity, back to the left atrium. So we can't eliminate that, but can we minimize can we reduce that amount of blood? And here is our final rerouting. The third rerouting is a little tube called the ductus arteriosus. You see it here, and not in you and me, but only in the fetal, in the fetus, um, is this little tube present. And it allows blood, if you can see it, to move from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta. So if you were to follow that superior vena cava blood, you would follow it down to the right ventricle, follow it out the pulmonary trunk, but uh, a very large amount of that blood can now escape from the pulmonary trunk um, into the aorta. And so a very small, reduced amount is actually passing into the lungs partly why the lungs grow so slowly, um, uh, because the amount of blood that's coming back then to the left atrium is very much reduced. Most of the blood in the left atrium has come from that inferior vena cava through the foramen ovale. So this ductus arteriosus solves the problem of the superior vena cava blood, that poor blood coming back to the left atrium. So all in all, where do the superior and inferior vena cava blood finally meet? They, they have to finally come in contact, but where do they finally meet? And you can see that here in the picture. They finally meet in the aorta, but as it begins to descend, through the thoracic cavity. Notice too that we have both uh, ventricles pumping into the aorta now, don't we? The left ventricle naturally pumps into the aorta, but now we've got the right side of the heart through that ductus arteriosus also pumping blood into the aorta. Some blood into the lungs, but quite a bit of blood over into the aorta to join that blood from the left-hand side. So what is so amazing here? What is this miracle? Where do they finally meet? Well, there you see it. They're meeting after the superior and inferior vena cava blood are finally meeting after the aortic arch, after the branches to the brain. The brain and the head and the upper part of the body receive more oxygen a better oxygenated blood than the rest of the body. The aorta below that is uh, a blood of much less quality. And you can see that in the color of the aortic arch versus the color of the aorta as it descends. In the whole picture here, you can see that. And it is this low level oxygenated blood in the aorta that is actually making its way down. This is the blood that gets pumped out the umbilical arteries and out to the placenta. So it's not deoxygenated, but the quality of blood is very low because of that final meeting point of superior and inferior vena cava blood. So let's, let's just kind of take, step back and take a full view, a full picture of this. Um, what you want to notice in a picture like this, that there isn't just oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, but you have several levels. 
oxygenated blood becomes reduced or diluted into sort of high to mid oxygenation, which is the pink colors you see, or diluted again into mid to low oxygenation. All three of these, fully and high to mid and mid to low, all have some useful oxygen in them. It's only when you see the blue deoxygenated that you're looking at blood that has no oxygen availability. So as you look through this entire picture, you should be able to see those levels and understand why they are the color that they are. Why do they have the oxygenation that they do? And basically it all comes down to those, um, those bypasses, right? If not for these fetal bypasses, you know, the, the, all of the oxygenation from the right atrium on, all of that would look that same purple color of the aorta. Um, the fact that the left side of the heart has better oxygenation and the aortic arch has better oxygenation is due to the ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale there in the heart. If not for those, every bit of blood through the heart, both sides, and the aortic arch would have very low oxygenations. So what does it come down to? It comes down to these five structures, umbilical arteries, the umbilical vein, the ductus venosus, the um, foramen ovale, and up there, the ductus arteriosus. Blood is being routed um, to get the best oxygenated blood possible to the brain. Um, if you want to really understand this, you have to stop for a minute, take a diagram like this, and follow that oxygenation. Follow the uh, umbilical blood into the inferior vena cava through the heart and up to the aortic arch and then follow the superior vena cava blood that's gonna make more of that pulmonary circuit from the right side of the heart, but jumping over into the aorta ultimately um, with the ductus arteriosus, okay? So you wanna take some time and evaluate this picture now based on these four lectures that we've had and make sure you understand um, where blood is going, all right? Good.